So let me make sure I understand. Nobody's watching sports. Everybody's staying home. People are spending time with their families and have suddenly discovered the joys of just going for a walk around their neighborhood? Has the whole world gone mad? Or has everyone just finally gotten on my level? Hello, and welcome back to our scripture class. We've wrapped up our unit on Mark and taken a day or two to reflect on how this different situation we're currently living in is affecting us spiritually and personally. I hope you enjoyed the opportunity not only to reflect and learn something about where you're at, but also to look at some of your classmates' reflections. We're about to start a new unit, so for those of you who are using the same paper notebook that you had back when we were in our classroom, um, you'll want to head to a new page and a new heading. We're about to start the infancy narratives. Let me give you that term again. Infancy narratives. It's not stories about infants, although you're close. These are the stories about Jesus before and while he's being born and is a, a, a newborn. Um, you probably think of these as the Christmas stories. A lot of angels and a manger and those sorts of things. We're actually going to read those stories, and for many of you, it's going to be the first time we read those not in the Christmas season and not while thinking about gifts and decorations and such, and they're going to look a little different given the Old Testament preparation we've had. Here's how this unit's going to be structured. We're going to spend two lessons in Matthew's infancy narrative, two lessons in Luke's infancy narrative, and then after four lessons in the infancy narratives, we'll take a test. Just like we did in the last unit, I'll give you a small paragraph or project or something else to complete in a limited span of time during our fifth class period, and it will count as a test grade just like the last one did. If that scares you or that's a little intimidating, remember, you want to take very good notes on today's exercise and on next class's lecture, etc. Because having well-organized notes that you wrote at your fingertips will make that work during that test period go so much faster. So if that was challenging for you last time, my challenge to you this time is to make that test easy by working very hard right now to get your notes well in order and well organized and to really dive in on the activity I'm gonna prescribe for you today. So, Today, we're going to work on just two chapters from the book of Matthew. Matthew 1 and Matthew 2, right in the beginning. Basically, your job is to read and outline those chapters, although I'm going to give you some technicalities for how I want you to do that. Um, first, for every single action that happens in the story, each plot point, every time someone travels or sends someone else a message, etc., for each plot point, I want two bullet points. One, I want you to tell me, this person does this, that person does another thing. Great, fine, that's what you usually think of as a plot summary. But I need you to go one point deeper. For each one of those, I need another bullet point that tells me why. As best you understand it, you're not always gonna get it right and that's okay. But for every action you see happen in Matthew 1 and 2, I wanna know who does what and why they do so. Understanding the characters and motivations is going to help us really understand what's happening here as a story. Um, this is going to be due at the end of class. So I'm going to expect a bullet point summary that for every single action that happens in those two chapters, who does what and why, that's going to be due and graded at the end of this period. You'll submit it as a comment. Feel free to work in a Google Doc and just share that with me as long as you both give me permission and post the comment at the end. Um, good news, because you watched to the end of the video, I'm going to let you skip part of it. Sort of. You're not quite skipping, but you're not plot summarizing. The first 17 verses of Matthew's Gospel are what's called a genealogy. They list this person is the son of this person is the son of this person is the son of this person. It's like a family tree, but only tracing one line. You don't need to outline the genealogy. You do, however, need to summarize the conclusion of the genealogy. That's verse 17. So your outline should start with a quick one to two sentence summary of verse 17 and what you think the point is. Then you can start your plot summary. That'll knock off about half a chapter for you. So really, 
You're summarizing one verse, and then you're outlining a chapter and a half. Shouldn't take you the whole class period. In a few minutes, I'm going to start a live stream. That's going to happen while you're doing your individual work. Um, that's not there to interrupt you or to stop you. It's there so you have a live line of communication with me to ask questions as we go. So right after this video ends, you're going to start your outline. Matthew 1, starting with verse 17. After that, every uh, plot point, who does what and why. Um, you'll go all the way through the end of Matthew 2. You'll be prepared to submit at the end of the period. A few minutes into your work, I'll inter interrupt you with a live stream so that if you get stuck or have any questions or feel lost, you can just ask me in the chat and I can answer in a way that everyone can see and hear. Because if you're stuck on something, it's likely that some of your classmates are as well. That's the plan for today. You're going to do your two chapter outline. Um, and then at the beginning of next class, we'll go really in depth into the meanings of some of the stuff you just summarized that really you're probably going to start to see as you outlined. I look forward to seeing your work. God bless.